human brain sizes weren't actually increasing at the rapid rate that they used to. In fact, they were decreasing. And the king of Ethiopia laughed at him completely and basically was like, of course you're going to live only 70 or 80 years if you're eating nothing but dirt. Our people live to 120 years of age, if not longer, how you can stop your brain from shrinking as well, because there's a 99% chance your brain is shrinking as well. Why exactly are human brains shrinking? at such a dramatic rate. Well, to understand this, actually, we're gonna have to look a little bit back in history. And history, in fact, will tell us the answer here. Now, the way we can tell that human brains were actually shrinking was even after civilization, they continued to shrink. So there was something happened a little bit before the start of civilization in order to cause human brains to shrink at such a dramatic rate. It actually has to do with what they ate. Now, this one might sound a little bit strange because actually it turns out what you eat significantly affects your brain size. And we're gonna be looking exactly at what humans in particular ate, or more specifically, why exactly are our brains shrinking with what we're eating right now? In fact, not only did human brains shrink, human lifespan as well did also seem to shrink, but it happened a little bit before civilization and during civilization. So what exactly is going on? And why did human brains and human lifespan shrink? Well, to do this, we're gonna have to look back not just 10 million years ago, but we're gonna also have to look back 5 million years ago, 3 million years ago, 2 million years ago, 1 million years ago, and to today's day and age. And we will be able to see very, very quickly just exactly why brains are shrinking today and how you can stop your brain from shrinking as well because there's a 99% chance your brain is shrinking as well. So to do this, let's look back exactly around 10 million years ago when this sort of started to show. Now, first, we already know that humans did evolve from Miocene hominids, and Miocene hominids are basically like a relative of apes, chimps, and that sort of a thing. And as you might have guessed, apes and chimps, for the most part, did eat lots and lots of, exactly, plants. They ate tons and tons of plants. Now, just because they ate tons and tons of plants doesn't actually mean their brain size was growing rapidly during that time. Now, we have to look a little bit further now after Miocene hominids. Next after Miocene hominids comes Australopithecus. Now Australopithecus did seem to eat pretty much the same thing than Miocene hominids, except there was a little bit of a difference. They actually ate small animals. And we know this because we actually know that tools were used by Australopithecus. And it, they weren't particularly amazing tools and super advanced, but they were tools and we can see this evidence. Now, this is a little bit interesting because if we jump a little bit more forward, we can see that about 2 million years ago in particular is when this giant rapid increase in brain size really starts to happen. After Australopithecus comes early Homo sapiens. Now I'll just refer to early Homo sapiens as early Homo. And some of the early, early Homo in particular, like Homo habilis, Homo rudolphinus, and Homo erectus in particular, are the early Homo sapiens that I'm talking about. And their brain size increased dramatically during one of the most pivotal points in human history, which is the Ice Age. Hashtag dead. Now, the early Ice Age actually quite unique because when the early Ice Age came, this obviously did kind of eradicate a lot of the possible fruits and vegetables, or basically tubers, that our previous ancestors, specifically Miocene, Miocene hominids and Australopithecus, ate. 
And this is where we come to what exactly did early homo eat that was different? Well, early homo weren't actually able to eat all those fruits and vegetables anymore, basically, and tubers, because they were very, very difficult to get because it was the ice age. So where exactly did they eat? Well, we actually know that they started to consume a lot of meat. And when I say a lot of meat, I mean significant amounts. Now, not only were early homo brain sizes increasing rapidly during that time, they also were starting to develop more advanced tools. And these more advanced tools were again used to deal with the animals that they were hunting. Now our next ancestors, which is the middle Pleistocene Homo sapiens, were even better at making tools, very, very advanced tools in fact. So what exactly did they use? Well, tools made by the middle Pleistocene Homo sapiens were actually quite unique because they were basically making like hand axes or they were even making cleavers, which are, is quite an advancement in terms of tools used before by the early Homo sapiens. Now, this is kind of a big deal because they use these tools in, to probably eat more meat and a lot more meat in fact. And we can see based on stable nitrogen isotope analysis, actually that middle Pleistocene Homo sapiens, like Neanderthals for instance, were really, really carnivorous, like apex level carnivory, which means they were basically eating just about every single thing they could see. And it doesn't really matter what it was. As long as it walked and it was an animal of some sort, they ate it. Now, one particular factor that actually made middle Pleistocene Homo sapiens actually way more advanced than early Homo sapiens was the fact that they could hunt together. Now, basically this is like hunting in terms of a pack of wolves. Now, we actually did pretty much just this. And this was one of the key features of middle Pleistocene Homo sapiens. Very, very unique because early Homo sapiens did not hunt in packs like this. This also means that basically they were working together very, very well, like really, really well. And they knew how to work together and they knew how to coordinate. And this brings us to the final, basically, evolution of where we are today. Homo sapiens. Now, as you might have guessed, late Neanderthals, as well as early Homo sapiens, based on stable nitrogen isotope analysis, as well as cave paintings, do seem to show not just apex level carnivory, but they also seem to show that they were hunting in packs once again. And this is exactly what we found out based on cave paintings, which are a really, really big and key future to understanding human history in the first place. Humans, in particular, Homo sapiens did seem to be, again, apex level carnivores, exactly like our most recent ancestors or the ones closest related to, which are basically middle Pleistocene Homo sapiens. Although suddenly something very strange happened, which was very weird because human brain sizes weren't actually increasing at the rapid rate that they used to. In fact, they were decreasing. In fact, they decreased so quickly, they almost decreased at the exact same level that they were previously increasing at. So what exactly caused this sudden change in brain size decrease? Now, this drop in particular did seem to happen around 10 to 5,000 years ago. So you can see just from this picture, MA in this graph is represented by mega annum, and this basically means millions of years and it seems to be hovering around 0.1 to 0.005. Now, this means that 1 million multiplied by these numbers in this case, 0.01 would be 10,000, which means 10,000 years ago. So this did seem to happen 10,000 years ago. And what exactly happened 10,000 years ago around that same time, which was a pivotal and crucial moment to human history itself? Actually, what did seem to happen for some reason is Things that never happened before in human history, like malocclusion, tooth decay, and basically infectious and inflammation of the gums started to happen. So what exactly does that mean? Well, this is actually where the agriculture revolution started to take place. And just around that exact same time, suddenly people, in particular Homo sapiens, did seem to start getting malocclusion, tooth decay, and infections, and basically inflammation of the gums. And this coincides exactly, and I mean basically exactly, with the precedent of the agricultural revolution. And what happened during the agricultural revolution? You guessed it, 
when humans started to eat more plants and vegetables. This is a big deal because when we started to eat way more plants and way more vegetables, all of these problems started to happen. And we started to see tons and tons of these things in today's day and age, especially, as well as previously in human history that never actually ha happened in human history ever before. Now, let's see if there's actually any historical records that can sort of demonstrate why exactly this happened, or maybe if it is, or if it isn't true. Now, this is where we come to human lifespan. Now, we do actually have some particular sources, which do seem to be, for the most part, the start of chronicling history in the first place, which comes from Herodotus. It was the one, or pretty much one of the main ones, to start first actually chronicling things and writing it down so we can actually have this record of history. And what exactly happened during that time? Well, the king of Ethiopia also started to talk with the king of Persia because, of their, because they were basically new neighbors. And the king of Ethiopia asked, how long do you guys live and what do your people eat? And the king of Persia basically said, well, we grow our crops and we basically just eat the bread and make uh, live off of the land. And we live for about 70 to 80 years. And the king of Ethiopia laughed at him completely and basically was like, of course you're going to live only 70 or 80 years if you're eating nothing but dirt. Our people live to 120 years of age, if not longer. And not only do we live to 120 years, if not longer, we don't eat dirt. We eat boiled, basically meat from our livestock and the milk from our livestock. Now that is a pretty interesting statement because he says we actually lived above 120 years old. And is there, de is there evidence for this possibly being the case? Now, if we look at one particular study, which basically analyzes how long are humans supposed to live based on genetic data, we actually see humans are supposed to live around on average 120 to 150 years of age. Now, isn't that a little bit strange? Because the king of Ethiopia actually said this, Herodotus uh, wrote it down, and somehow this isn't a little bit more known and actually observed. And we look at it and go, huh, they lived until 120, and they say they ate basically meat and only meat for the most part, if not 150 years. And Persians only lived 70 to 80 years. That sounds a lot like today. Hmm. Interesting. So it seems like this is actually a little bit strange because the historical data and the scientific data are actually lining up, which doesn't really happen too often. But let's take another look a little bit further in human history. And we can see sort of a uh, reason this could be this carnivore diet or specifically eating meat and only meat actually might be what humans are meant to do. And we can see this by the greatest empire in all of history. Probably no, no doubt actually that this was the greatest empire in all of human history. And you might've guessed it. It's the Mongols. Yes. The way you feel. One kiss is all it takes. <laughs> the Mongols in particular were actually highly carnivorous. They, pretty much uh, ate meat, they drank the blood of their horses, and th they pr pretty much ate meat and only meat. And they really didn't have much else to live off of because they were living in the plains. And the plains, you can't really grow much there. Not only can you not grow much in the plains, foraging and basically finding berries of stuff and such is very, very difficult in the plains as well. And they, unlike any other <laughs> civilization in human history were actually able to invade Russia during the winter. And because they were that, that strong, they were just an unparalleled force in human history. So maybe next time you go out and you eat, or maybe next time you cook yourself a meal, just remember that what you eat really is affecting not just your brain size, but pretty much your entire body in such a dramatic way. And it seems as if living longer actually has to do with eating more meat 
based on human history. Now, if you found this video interesting, I recommend you check out my video on how exactly do you think humans showered or maybe brushed their teeth back in the day because clearly that was must have been a really big problem. Now, <laughs> from my experience, I am actually living proof that humans did not need to do either of these because I am living proof of this. I haven't showered in four years or brushed my teeth in two years. And this is pretty uh, quite a big deal, I think, because people don't realize that showering, brushing your teeth isn't actually necessary. It's only necessary under certain conditions, very, very certain conditions. And especially brushing your teeth, you never need to brush your teeth if you're actually eating what you're meant to eat, because I haven't brushed my teeth in two years. And the dentist didn't know that at all. In fact, he thought I brushed my teeth today when I was basically getting my teeth checked out. So that's a little food for thought. Now I am finally a YouTube partner. So thank you again to all of my subscribers and to all of my viewers. Now, if you want to support my YouTube channel, then you can click the join down below link where it says join and you can help me support my channel. Now, if you're interested in certain topics, again, you can ask me or ask in the comments below and say, hey, I'm interested in this topic or I'm interested in that topic. Yeah, so anyways, if you found this video helpful, like, share, subscribe, comment, and that will be it. I'll be leaving. See ya.